my dear friends we need to clean ourselves on and off we wash our face brush our teeth and it's it's as long as we live in this world so pollute pollution is part of life there's no other way we have to clean even spiritually it's important that we clean ourselves for that you have to know that you are dirty that you are stinking that you are, that you are smelling so if you if you don't have that spiritual sense of of identify that you are you are impure it's dangerous we find in the first reading these days we are taking the reading from the book of maccabee where people had to go through terrible terrible pain because of pagan practices and there they came to a point where they destroyed the temple destroyed the, the altar and killed the priests and they took a bold decision went away away to the wilderness and today we find how they rebuilt the temple re clean the temple consecrating the temple we find in the gospel first reading in those days judas and judas and his brothers said behold our enemies are crushed let's go up to cleanse the sanctuary and dedicate it so it's 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 under pagan practices so enemy is there to destroy your worship place worship is a place where you honor god the worship is a place where you give respect to him worship is the place where you allow god to control your life so that should be the first and the best place like like it was in the temple so dissolving you polluting enemy's main target is to disconnect you pollute the temple so they find that you have to crush the enemy you cannot toy with him you have to crush the enemy whatever the force that come come in between you and god you have to impute it crush it there's no way so that's why we are since we have crushed now let us go to cleanse the sanctuary and dedicate it my dear friends we often go for confession confession in confession you you kill the sin but then your tendency is always there you don't crush the cause root because you have the root you can't keep on doing the same thing so in prayer you don't go to the presence of the lord and you go don't probe into our hearts and see the root of it you have to crush it so without crushing the enemy the, the it's useless to clean the temple the more you clean again and again the enemy will would come and come and destroy it so they first crush the enemy so this should be a a self life journey also early in the morning in the 20th fifth day 25th day of ninth month which is the month of chislip in the 148th year they rose and offered sacrifice as the law directs on the new altar of whole burnt offering that they had built so it was early morning is it it's early morning business it's a fresh business when it comes to the lord you have to give the first and the best place you cannot give that place to any one or anything so that's the place where we we are distracted most with our with our, with our phones with our work so will we give the first and the best place so we have to check and recheck what hinders my connection what dissolute my 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 altar so it's a time for you to rebuild it and all the people fell on their faces and worship and blessed heaven who had pro- prospered them so they celebrated dedication of the altar for eight days and offered whole burnt offerings with gladness so see the joy when you give the first place to the lord 
See the joy in their lives. My dear friends, there was a very great gladness among people. And the reproach, the reproach of the Gentile was removed. The very day the Gentiles Gentiles used the altar, that that was the very day they took to cleanse it, reunite it. Then Judas and his brothers and all the assembly of Israel determined that every year at that season, the days of the dedication of the altar should be observed with gladness and joy for eight days, beginning with the 25th day of the month of month of Chislev. My dear friends, so it's a it's a joyful joyful event. It has to be a joyful event when the dirt is gone. Of course, imagine you have you a person without bath, without a bath for for years, months. You take the person, you know. So it's a it's a it's a painful experience to clean a person like that. But then after cleaning, it's real joy. We find today Jesus, Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold, saying to them, "It's written, my house shall be house of prayer." So Jesus and Jesus every year, every Jew had to go to the temple. There were three feasts. Normally they go there. Feast of Tabernacle, Feast of Harvest, and Feast of Pentecost and and, uh, and uh, Passover. So so Jesus used to go there, but this time it was different. He took a scourge and uh, and drove everyone. Because it's it's the place where the pagans should worship. Of course, they, they had to change their money because, because money changes had to be there because the temple will never use the money given by the Roman, Roman Empire. So it's, it's a need. But then they could have gone outside the temple to do that. So they are disolluting the place. They are disturbing the pagan worship. Pagans, those who can, those who wish to come to the temple and worship God, so they were disturbing them, and they were they were ro- they were robbers. The money exchanging rates were they were they were manipulating them. My dear friends, Jesus is cleaning it. He has to come and clean. Think about your life. It has to be a house of prayer. In two, in one Corinthians chapter six verse eighteen, it said, "You are bought, and your body is a temple of God." So this is your your temple. What are you doing with your with your life? You're using it for your own whims and fancies, own selfish carnal desires. You have made it a robber's den of robbers, isn't it? So we have to allow Jesus to come. There's no other way. There's no other way. Satan will never rest. The enemy will never rest. He will come on and off. Or he feels he's vigilant all the time. The moment the time allows, the situation allows, he creep into a house and stole, steal it. That's his way. It's like a roaring lion, my dear friends. So that's exactly why you have to be vigilant. You have to love the Lord. The word of God is like a sword, double-edged sword. Test your thought. That's exactly what should happen in your life. Because you have to examine your conscience all the time. The devil will creep like anything without, uh, without you being obs- without observing. Realize, you realizing that he's there. So it's important. Of course, cleaning causes pain. You have to pay a price for, for that. But then yet, there's no other way. You have to allow the Lord to turn the table, stop sit away. Throw the baskets away. Turn your plans and crush your dreams because he has a plan for you. Your life should be a, a den, a life should be a house of prayer, not a den of robbers. You belong to God. Allow him to come to your house. Amen. May God bless you.